Well, uh, this is a little journey about my over 20 years uh, research, and uh, I started my career doing research in ICTV. I think one of the faculty members right here, Mr. Kamir Rawat, has been there at my time in 1997. And then I moved at the University of Al Andalus University as a uh, assistant professor in 1997-98. Uh, after three years, I moved to uh, Rutgers. Uh, I went to Johnson Medical School for the postdoc. Three years there, I learned a lot of core transcription biology and molecular biology. Uh, and then I came back, resumed my positions back in KMU. Uh, uh, I've been basically started my career as my independent career after the postdoc in Rutgers as working on the medical resistance, the one which is which is not so much important uh, field at that time, but now. And it's one of the hard case to work on it. Whole world is worrying about uh, AMR issue. Uh, I learned of uh, techniques in AMR uh, under the Vice Boss Fellowship in 2005 and 10 in France and Italy. Uh, core, uh, you know, uh, different mechanisms of AMR and, and drug design and so on. So first, I'll just today talk about being having the diversified group of students and scientists here, which are different field. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the core research, but give you some idea about what AMR is and how it is important. So currently in my lab, we are focusing on epidemiology to structure the site of different resistant markers and of course the biotin a major cause of drug resistance in, 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 in bacteria. Uh, we're looking at thematic approaches to uh, inhibitor and drug design as well as full value therapy and nanomaterials, medicines. The approaches which are used in the genomics, proteomics, biomics, and gene editing by CRISPR. Uh, so, why drug resistance is a global concern? This is not a major issue. Uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, several cutting from papers I got from India, uh, AMR has become one of the major concerns of uh, WHO, and WHO has uh, uh, given a priority on AMR research, uh, not in the country but across the world. Uh, you see some of the uh, information in the media that uh, two out of three healthy Indians uh, are, are having resistance problem in the microbiota. So this is another point of concern. Uh, this is another important news that uh, 10,000 fake antibiotic viruses recovered from uh, COVID. So this is another problem. Uh, what we are eating, what we are taking as a drug, is really drug or not? This is a big issue. So these are some of the important things that we have to look into. Now, you know this man is a, a known mathematician, Ramanujan, who died because of the cheaper classes. He was not very well at that time. He was a wife, so he was a wife, fellow of our society. And in 1970, he moved out in 1919. He died after followed by 1919 in India because of the cheaper classes. Because the no drug was available. So uh, this, this, this is how the drugs, the antibiotics are important to control the infection. Now, this is the uh, first person uh, from Oxford University, the constable in Oxford University, Albert uh, Alexander, who was the first treated uh, by penicillin, discovered by this man. So he's the man behind the antibiotic discovery. Uh, but after the discovery of antibiotic, there's a lot of hope in the veteran field for the patients, for the you know the soldiers who are infected by various infections and uh, some, some other uh, infections like gonorrhea or deadly diseases. So people thought that after this of passing, you can treat many patients and people and there's a lot of hope. But if you look into the non current scenario in the 21st century, the clinical superbug challenge, a paper came in 2009, and this was a really a challenge for the clinicians and health workers and physicians to handle infections. Okay. Now if you look the, uh, uh, this is just for a layman, why resistance is the concern? So basically, resistance organisms uh, lead to the treatment failure and increased mortality, added burden on the healthcare cost, and resistant bacteria <coughs> spread in the community, threatened failure of current antibiotics, use of returning to prehistoric era. So these are the some important things that we have to look into why the resistance is important to study. Now, if we keep doing carelessness in using antibiotics and treating with you know, use and overuse of antibiotics, and probably will end up with this pre-historic era when there was no antibiotics in the 1940s, before 1940s. Now, you should also think that resistance is a uh, defense mechanism, and this is the uh, intrinsic uh, property of the bacteria to defend from the antibiotics, to defend, to defend from the antimicrobial agent, and it is unstoppable mechanism. 
if you start giving that divide to the bacteria, it start developing you know, a different mechanism in order to protect, to combat against the drugs. So this is the natural phenomenon, you cannot protect it. Uh, the resistance is accelerated through inappropriate use of antibiotics. Uh, the standard treatment guidelines uh, not provided to the physicians and uh, to the clinicians, and if they are, they are not aware of them. Drugs available without prescriptions over the counter. Then accessible but poor quality of drug. Inadequate monitoring, and irrational self administration or prescription. So these are the some important points and important factors which are leading to the antibiotic drug resistance and uh, the patient problem. Uh, poor compliance of the patients uh, of antibiotics under treatment and different even different settings like animal polyclinics and community settings and hospital settings. So it is said that 50% of the antibiotics are prescribed inappropriately across the country. 50% patients have poor compliances. Then 50% of the population do not have access to the essential antibiotics. Now if you look at this slide, it's really scary. You know, the, the, the date of antibiotic we discovered and the risk developed. See, the last result of antibiotic, and physicians are right here, uh, it may be discovered in 1985, in 1998, it was almost in 30 years it's all lost, and today it's a big problem of CRE, carbon resistant bacteria where across the globe. So, and, and this year has stopped probably as well my little knowledge is concerned to, 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 to design a new drug or a new antibiotic, especially because uh, antibiotics, they, the way you, uh, you design antibiotics and the rest of are so smart and they start developing new mechanisms to not combat the antibiotics. So, it's a big issue. Now, I'll not go into detail of the slides, it's more complicated, but just to give you an idea about WHO has declared in 2014 that uh, after the surveillance in 114 countries across the globe, that the common infection called the E. coli, Escherichia coli, which is present in our gut, and transfer of lethal, dead, uh, deadly disease infections, which are not cured in different countries uh, because of the same problem. And hence, uh, they have declared as the primary research area is, is, is AMR, the antibiotic will resistance. Now, CRE is another issue that uh, we call the carbon resistant antibacterial C, uh, which is, uh, we call a subset of, uh, you know, uh, AMR uh, in which the, the, the carotenoids, imipenem, and meropenem are the drugs which are getting resistance uh, in the bacteria, more than 30 to 40 percent population across the globe. Of course, in some of the region in India and other countries are less, and some is more. Uh, and this is an NDM, the new class of metal metabolites belong to the carotenoids, and these are the uh, these are the enzymes which are discovered, or rather which are produced by the bacteria in 2009, first identified uh, NDM in Trapsular pneumonia in Swedish patient who traveled to India and treated in New Delhi and Chandigarh and was found to have NDM1. Uh, and from onward, 2009, we've got uh, 21 different variants of NDM over the period of time. That shows how frequently they keep changing, having mutation and evolve new NDM1. And if you look, we have gone through all NDM in my lab, you know, most of them which are present in Indian subcontinents, especially NDM4, NDM5, and, you know, and they are really, you know, troublesome. Uh, this is the report of WHO, uh, really, uh, currently the AMR, 700,000 people are dying because of AMR. It is said that in coming years, in 20, 30 years, more than 10 million people will die every year because of AMR, which is much, much higher, probably because of Dead by cancer or dead by other ailment. So, this is really a point of concern to look into and be careful about the uh, issue of AMR. The world. Now, this is some of the old data uh, we published in 2017 uh, from my own lab, uh, just to show you the statistics. If you look at the NDM, one of the enzymes which is causing the drug resistance in the bacteria, 66% uh, population having this. Uh, enzyme produced in bacteria cause resistance with oxa, which is a little less carotenoids, uh, associate number of NDM 9%, imp and bimpa, uh, you know, 50 and 30 percent with clasular KPC is 1.9 percent. So these are the enzymes which are produced by the bacteria, and so the bacteria having these enzymes being expressed are not cured by the available drugs, especially in the carotene group of drugs, or in the old version, uh, old class of drugs. Now, in 2014, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, my lab discovered NDM4 
in, in one of the hospitals seen with water right from Aligarh Hospital. Uh, and that was the first identification from India, reported first time in India. And we characterized the molecular level this enzyme history. And in fact, we compared this enzyme based on the genetic environment to different molecular tools. And it is close to the MDO1, but it is a different variant of MDO1. We call it MDO4. And that enzyme was really much, much severely affecting the population having uh, the bacteria uh, infection caused the itself bacteria having this enzyme. And so news was published in various uh, media. Uh, in Uruguay, ICMR was also concerned about these things. Now, this is the uh, uh, this is the statistical data I'm trying to show you, although it is uh, a little bit older, but uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's important in terms of the comparison of the country with the India was found, and these are the same ones we found. So Bangladesh and India are the top. Uh, rest of the countries are not much. Uh, for many reasons, but if you look this slide, you find UK is 19.1. So it is basically, let me clear you, UK is not 19.1 because UK is the pioneer to start. The, cat, the laboratory the cat, but the Timothy Walsh was the pioneer of leading the India one discovery in the uh, Swedish patient in India who traveled in India. And so from onward, a lot of work had been done from UK on Indian athletes. So the paper which he came up from the UK, they are all Indian aspects. So ultimately, it's basically Indians are fine and it's not for you. There's no way to do it. Uh, followed by in 2015, the discovery of NCR1, uh, which is the next marker, uh, caused the resistance again, caused Because what happened after the resistance developed uh, against the uh, immune pneumonia and marrow pneumonia, the last resort of antibiotics, doctors start giving the cholesterol, which is not an antibiotic, it is a drug nephro and neurotoxin, but uh, one has to save the patient having infections and infection, um, you have to go to the colosin and polymixin. But China, one of the Chinese group discovered in 415, the MCR1 in Prague, and that was a report, uh, lost all the hope of physicians and health workers. And now, today, we have even more than 60% of the population of bacteria circulating in environmental setting and hospital setting having collection resistance, which is not a good news. So these are the this is the map by given by NCBC and all the nation antimicrobial laboratories working on this uh, in India, especially uh, on these AMR issues, uh, giving the data. So they have generated this data. Now this data is again uh, serious. Uh, if you look at the different priority organisms present and the isolates which are basically uh, being studied and numbers uh, quite high numbers. And based on this information, we found that uh, uh, you know, the sample taken from different human blood and others, and we found different organisms which are present uh, uh, here in this case of priority pathogens uh, study. And based on these priority pathogen study, uh, the resistance mechanism was identified. It's horrible. You see that resistance against the vitamin is a 30%. So what does it mean? It means 30% of the bacteria circulating in the population, you know, are lost the effect of the drug against them the infection is caused. So, and compared to the old version of a drug like amphetamines and cyphrosporines and other cyphoxidine, cyphrosidine, it's in more than 50%. So it means the conditions are not good, it's very severe. And they have been studied, I'm not going to repeat all, but if you look at the E. coli, similarly they have same data on Clapsida. So all the common pathogens, opportunistic pathogens, are having this problem of resistance. I'm skipping the slide because of time, but the same data. See the person resistance is 65% and 48%. You know, it's very high percent resistance being found in these organisms. Uh, the same data, they have in fact pseudomonas, the A. bomini. Uh, which is high in case of A bombing, you have it may be in 66%. So most of the A bombing I said, which are very common in hospital setting and nosocomial infection, having resistance up to 60, 60, 65%. This is the antibacterial species. So they have uh, identified escape microorganism. We call it all the they are given the name escape, the self microorganism commonly present in uh, such kind of infection. Uh, this is the uh, report uh, showing the estimated uh, neonatal sepsis death caused by the bacteria resistance in the first uh, by China and, 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 and Democratic and Pakistan and India. So India is on the top. The highest death rate was found in this. Uh, the total sample is positive, negative. 
So this is the, the worst situation now. We look at consumption of antibiotics. So uh, the consum consumption of antibiotics in case of uh, livestock and poultry are high in China. And that is the reason the colostin was given in the poultry sperm for chicken, for different animals to take them. And hence the resistance is very high in, in case of uh, countries like China. But India is not high in terms of consumption because probably because they are not aware about how to protect the chicken and the dying and the dying. So this is probably the case. Anyway, so they have not used much uh, for them, but this is good for that because they are not having the collagen resistance across the country yet. Yeah. Probably you are safe in that case. Uh, this is the uh, Okay, so this is a scoping report uh, uh, published in probably 17, Canadian, yeah, 1615 by ICMR and some UK agency. Uh, they have been studying more than 650 probably. Uh, sorry, 650 uh, institution across the country. This is based on India, and they found that uh, different institutions are working on AMR issues. And out of 650, the top 10 institutions that identified in India, those were focusing on uh, AMR issue in different way, threat designing, mechanism, and technology, and so forth. Probably, fortunately, we because I'm from AMU, AMU is among the number top, top four, fourth university. Uh, four institutions who are working on AMR issues, and uh, probably my lab may work there as a research researcher. Uh, if you look at this policy data, last drug, no drug is left anymore after this. If infection caused by policy based bacteria, nobody can do that. We'll debate death, just like the AIDS state. See, the survival rate is 31 and died at 69. So, this is the CS issue now to look into. Uh, a divided business in the environment setting. So basically, what is the most important point here is these resistance which are present quite in the plasmid and they are separating from bacteria to bacteria in the environmental setting or hospital setting, especially in the nosocomial infection, is through markers are transferred from plasma to plasma through different IS elements and DL elements. Uh, you know, this is more technical words, probably those who are not aware will not understand. But uh, uh, so based on some of the research uh, we have just shown you, uh, my lab is focusing on them and uh, we've identified. So here today I'm just talking about uh, core epidemiology and uh, the survey study, surveillance study in my lab. I'm not talking about the mechanism, the core multi-biology we are doing because of the diversified audience here. Uh, but this is the common thing you can understand. So we have identified the end of one, four, five, and seven in our uh, city that is in Aligarh. Hospital, which are covered by all West UP region patients of West UP, and it's 150,050 uh, very department hospitals having an ICU and ICU and CCU and uh, NICU settings uh, uh, very well established. So, if you look at the data, you find different E. coli, Clapsula, Citrobacter, and all varieties of bacteria are present. They are having the different variants of Andium. Which are evolved over the period of time, right from India 1 to 4, 5, 7, and they are highly circulating, not in this area, in the whole Indian scenario, in the whole Indian country, you find these variants. Other variants are not yet found. 2 and 5 is all, 2 and 3 is another one common factor which are present, but so far we have found it here. Uh, now, uh, this is another study we have made in uh, 4, 5, 7 to 3 uh, isolates from uh, an ICU patient. Uh, it is the first reported. A study and characterize them at the molecular level. I've shown how. The, so, the most important thing is you have MIT. MIT is a minimum inhibitory concentration. It means the amount of the drug is given to the bacteria to kill. So, if it is high, it means it is resistant. If it is low, it is susceptible. So, see the level 1000. So, it means you have 1000 micrograms per minute drugs to be given for the bacteria to kill you know, under the condition where the NDM. 4, 5, and 7 express in the bacteria. So having such bacterial infection, you cannot imagine to cure the patient having this infection. Where if you look at compared to the normal susceptible rate is 2, less than 2, 0.5 to 1 microgram per ml. Compared from 0.5 to 1 microgram per ml, it goes to you know thousands. You know, uh, There's another study we performed on very interesting uh, Seresia, the type of very rare organic, which we identified in the patient. Uh, 
and uh, we can try it in town and we are learning it and we get a sequence uh, to study further. And this is another study we found uh, in NICU, NICU with the neonatal intensive care where they have uh, kept the new years of uh, two, three days or four days, less than one, one month babies that they have got infection and so the mortality rate is high if they are not being cured. If you look this, uh, see the data. The neighboring melopenium and these are the last resort antibiotics. See, highly resistant, the whole range of 500. So you have to, you know, several hundred fold highly antibiotics required to kill the cell. You know, if you give dynamite antibiotic, you will kill the man, you kill the human, you will be fit. So, okay, I'll probably, I am a little bit late. Uh, yeah, yeah, this will be. So, few of the more uh, things. Uh, Touching it. Yeah, this is the and the NDM6 variants. This is the patient who died after he struck after we tried the sample. And there was a kidney patient, some kidney problems, high infections, 56 year old man. Uh, who is in Sutra Dr. Bakmani was uh, identified immediately. We have completely sequenced the whole genome and we found a very interesting data which I'm not going to discuss but just tell you it was found with new uh, Europathogen bacteria and having this seed, the level of resistance. So all the antibiotics are resistance. How can you save the patient having this infection? So the summary, uh, we have uh, described the first idea, we described the first idea for using ST3344. So this is the first ever strain of MLST type we identified in the world. And we submitted that strain in the uh, Robert Koch Center uh, of uh, Data Submission. Uh, they were a two strain of this kind. Uh, we could use the strain of NDM OXA. So having OXA as a less expressed carbon lineage compared to NDM, which is highly expressed, the combination of the two make the strain more resistant than the single. And genetic environment analysis revealed that this is the ice element, which basically helps to associate the gene to carry from here to there. So just like original gene transfers. And this is the main reason how the resistance spread across the globe. And Kenonia SC416 was associated with the co produced production of the OXA uh, NDM. It's another study. NDM6 producing Citrobacter Bakmani 114 was identified in an ICU. Again, the first study. Now, just two minutes. Uh, what to do next? So, this is very important way to think of sensitivity. So, based on that, my lab is also focusing on some understanding the mechanism. So, focusing on acquired mechanism. Uh, we have a different kind of mechanism of killing antibiotics but we are focusing on the sign. Uh, this one, beta lactamases. So, so this is the uh, beta lactam uh, antibiotics. See, all the drugs antibiotics, beta lactam based on this nucleus. This is the enzyme, variety of enzyme, do the same mechanism. What they do, they identify this and they cleave this ring and make it drug ineffective. So having this express enzyme in bacteria in making the drug ineffective, so what we are doing, my lab is focusing on the mechanism of this enzyme to go inside the way and we can try you know, dozens of mutations we generated in our lab, the structural study of this enzyme. And what we found, the TIP93 was found to be very essential amino acid, although it's a distant site, not an active site, and found to be very highly effective, uh, leading to the resistance uh, in this enzyme. And then the published in 2015, followed by we published many papers on the same study to identify these 12 different nutrients in our lab to understand, the, to understand the structures for designing the drug. By the time we uh, identified several inhibitors, again these enzymes after identifying these specific mutations uh, to, to, to inhibit the to enzymes and uh, we all published data based in the domain. I think this is all what we have done so far in the last couple of years. And this is my team, research team. Uh, I think uh, he is now a nice uh, AIMS now, a postdoc, he is coming to PhD, Arvid is still doing, and uh, this is the girl who has done a lot of work, and Arvid, Duvaka is doing a lot of proteomics works uh, to understand both sides of the uh, different risk of markers, and so on and so forth. And this is my, I think, grant that we have been received so far, uh, this uh, ICMR, GDP, NMR, and others, agencies, and without these grants, I think the work is not possible. And these are my some collaborators from Italy. He's my mentor in Italy, who is, uh, I mean, still associated with him. And this is the NICU chart from Simonale from University, Ashok Sharma from CMAP, and 
Framingham and Fiji are some have been banned from exporting.